Hey guys, I just took a look at recent videos that were uploaded when you do the search thing under the name Chris Watts. And I noticed there seems to be, what should I call it? Well, it looks to me like this week's script is about people arguing with each other. So I went back into my classic Miss Mensa collection of videos and found a video that I created back in 2018. And it's interesting because here we are almost three years later. And that video is perhaps even more relevant than the videos that I saw that have been recently posted. And it got me to thinking. I wonder if at the time that I posted this video, if that was the script at that time that channel creators who were trying to build a YouTube channel for themselves or channel creators who were directly involved in attacking and harming and harassing, slandering, libeling, and defaming innocent people, those of us they targeted right from the start before many of us had even heard of this case. I don't know. I'm just kind of curious because it sure seems to me like history just keeps right on repeating itself over and over again. And what was once known as the true crime community, but specific to the case of Christopher Watts, has become nothing more than a drama corner. So, here you go. This is one of many of the classic Miss Mensa collection. Think about it. This was created in 2018. Let that sink in. Hey guys, I'm sure most of you are familiar. Well, I hope that most of you are familiar with the play Romeo and Juliet, one of Shakespeare's greatest hits. Well, if you remember the opening scene, two servants were basically bashing, I'll call it the other side. The two servants who were bashing the other side were from the house of Capulet. And they were bashing the house of Montague. In fact, one of them was really going off with his hatred of the house of Montague. And then the two of them were talking about physical violence against the house of Montague. And they were also talking about sexual violence against the Montague women. Well, in the United States, we have kind of a different version. Sad to say. And our version is referred to as the Hatfields and the McCoys. The McCoys lived, I think, in Kentucky. And then the Hatfields lived over in West Virginia. Oh my goodness, I don't even want to dig into this, but I think it's important for us to discuss this specific to the case of Christopher Watts. And I'm no expert at all on the whole Hatfields and the McCoys thing. But I want to say this. It sounds like the feud started when Asa, and I don't even know which side of the pack he was on, when Asa got killed by rebels, okay? At least that's what his widow wrote down on her pension application, that 
her husband was killed by rebels. 13 days after he left the Union Army. He was killed near his home. He wasn't killed in the war. What I read said that Ace's company was mustered out on December 24th, 1864 in Ashland. He was killed near his home on January 7th, 1865. It says a group of Confederate guerrillas took credit for the killing. And then it says that his wife's pension application states that he was killed by rebels. Okay, that started the feud, evidently, between the Hatfields and the McCoys. That was the first violent incident. Now let me read you this. The second recorded instance of violence in the feud occurred 13 years later. 13 years later. <laughs> That's called Holden, a major, whatever. The second recorded instance of violence in the feud occurred 13 years later in 1878 after a dispute. You're going to love this. After a dispute about the ownership of a hog. Floyd Hatfield, a cousin of Ansys, had the hog, but Randolph McCoy claimed it was his, saying that the notches on the pig's ears were McCoy, not Hatfield marks. The matter was taken to the local justice of the peace. <sighs> <laughs> who ruled for the Hatfields by the testimony of one of their relatives who was a relative of both families. <laughs> okay. In June of 1880, the guy who testified was killed by two McCoy brothers, Sam and Paris, who were later acquitted on the grounds of self-defense. The feud escalated after Rosanna McCoy entered a relationship with Devil Anse's son, Johnson. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up, right? Oh, good Lord. So, this is what I want to say. Did you hear that last night, last evening, one of Christopher Watts' sister's friends went on AD's live chat and talked and talked and talked and said all sorts of things in a way that really made me wonder whether or not she gives a rat's ass at all, ever, about what happened to Bella and Cece. And it really made me wonder about the dynamics of this case discussion and who knows who and who talks to who and who said what about who and when and where. We have all sorts of details, don't we? All sorts of confusing details and there's all sorts of anger. I mean, if you could see what I see with these comments that are flooding in, there's a whole lot of strange going on. A whole lot of strange. Kind of like Samson and Gregory in Act One.
Shakespeare gave us Romeo and Juliet. The Civil War gave us the Hatfields and the McCoys. And I'm thinking that the case of Christopher Watts is nothing more and nothing less than the online version.